Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife um, is the state agency that would be, if this deal goes through, that would be giving away Oregon public water resources so they can be bottled by Nestle. And, in order, and they're, they're applying for a water exchange permit that would allow that to happen. They can pull out of that water exchange at any time. And they're our state agency, they represent Oregonians, and over 20,000, well over 20,000 Oregonians have been calling on Governor Kitzhopper, asking him to tell the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife to pull out of that water exchange, because it's not in the interest of Oregonians or our public water resources. And it sets a horrible precedent precedent of allowing a state agency to kind of de facto partner with Nestle. They'd be literally giving away water so the town of Cascade Locks can sell the water for fractions of a penny per gallon to, to Nestle so they can bottle it and make 5,000 times profit on it. Mm -hmm. That is a really dangerous precedent to allow a state agency to enter into that kind of a water exchange agreement. So for all those reasons, we're calling on the governor to stop it from moving forward. We've gotten, we've gained the uh, support of over a dozen state legislators calling on Governor Kitzhopper to stop this from moving forward because they're hearing from their constituencies, um, their constituents, excuse me. Um, uh, even Jeff Kogan, the chair of Multnomah County, has sent a letter to the governor asking him to stop this project from moving forward. Uh, and as I mentioned, tens of thousands of Oregonians. You even have the support of a local union, religious groups, uh, physicians for social responsibility. I mean, this is not an environmental issue. This is a, you know, water is a public resource and it should not be up for grabs like this, uh, you know, in our state. And Oregonians have a say. So. Not only that, but they're going to build a, a bottling plant that, that uses plastic made from petroleum. And yep. they're all the, what was it, 200 trucks a day or something? Yeah, it's going to the increase peak. the carbon footprint. Yep. And, uh, and, the, and, and what's really great is that the city gives away the, the excuse me, the state gives away the water for free. Um, and then Nestle's 210 truck trips a day during peak season are going to be on the surface roads and Cascade Locks, which are not graded for that level of truck traffic. Guess who's going to foot the bill on upgrading those roads and Cascade Locks? Mm, taxes. <laughs> yeah. And Nestle has made it clear they will not pay for those road upgrades. So the, the state of Oregon will pay a lot of money to let Nestle come into town to bottle our state agency's water, like our water, the water that all Oregonians own under Oregon water law. The water is owned by all Oregonians, and and like we would literally be paying. <laughs> it will be an expense to the state to have Nestle come in and bottle our water. Well, the the, the folks to, who, on whatever agency that made this decision to get those two permits, they must have been at least superficially aware of these these reasons. Why would they do it? Um, you may not know, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, the Water Resources Department made those decisions, and uh, and and really, ultimately, uh, the line that they will, what they'll say, is that they have to follow very strict parameters when they get these applications, and if there is, if they don't perceive any legal issues with these applications, they have to approve them. They'll just give you the procedural argument. Ah, okay. Um, uh, and that's why we're really saying ODFW, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, is not obligated to go through with the water exchange. They're voluntarily submitting this water exchange application. They can retract it at any time. And that's why the real impetus is on. And we actually know that they're very responsive to the governor because they said way back when Kulongoski was governor that they were moving forward with the water bottling uh, with, with the water exchange because uh, Kulongoski told them to do it. So we know that they're going to be responsive to a, a, you know, the pressure from the governor mm -hmm. and that's why uh, you know, we're, we're really pushing for this. For this. Um, right. Well the water exchange situation is because they want to use the water that's going to be used for the uh, oxbow fish hatchery, right? Right. So if Nestle just wanted to bottle uh, the town's municipal water, it, would be, it wouldn't be worth their while. Uh, that they can sell the spring water for more money. Um, the Arrowhead brand is Nestle's spring water brand in the Northwest, and it's more expensive than their Nestle Pure Life brand, which is tap water in a bottle. Um, they're bottling municipal water under their Nestle Pure Life brand. Um, if they just wanted to, to open up a Nestle Pure Life water bottling facility, they'd go. They'd probably try to do it in Portland. You know, they would just, you know, bottle municipal water, you know, close to the market. Right out of Willamette. Who knows? Yeah. Well, that's how that's how Pepsi does it, right? Yeah. So what we, uh, 
Nestle is one of the last water profiteers, you know, who's willing to go off the beaten path to bottle spring water and and sell it for more money. And the, and they have a track record of going across the country in rural communities that've been hit with difficult economic times, making big promises on jobs and underselling the you know the environmental impacts. And and uh, and they come into those towns uh, to to uh, and 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 take advantage of their spring water resources. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, in Acosta County, Michigan, and in, in a few cases in Maine, um, and in Atlanta, you know, they've uh, excuse me, not Atlanta, in in Mecosta County, Michigan, they've had huge impacts to the local water system. Uh, you know, springs went dry, um, and they kept pumping even after that happened. So I mean, like, this is not a company who cares about rural communities. They're not doing this, mm. you know, right? You know, to to save a small town. They're doing this to make a lot of money on public spring water resources. But I want to encourage folks out there to uh, to. Uh, Go to bark-out.org. I know Food and Water Watch is a, a national organization, and you don't have a separate website for here. But Bark, mm -hmm. you can go to bark-out.org, and you can also, on the left side, you can find some uh, newswire items about this particular issue here. And the big thing, call Governor Kitsop or send him a letter. Let him know what you think. He needs to know that you know, the majority of Oregonians don't want to see Nestle bottling water in the scenic Columbia River Gorge. It's just not the right place. Not the and right it's not place. The right uh, and, and the state agencies have no business giving away public water resources, so it can happen. And so. we don't need to encourage any more use of plastics and, and petroleum along the way as well. It's well, true. Julia, thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. We'll do this.